Hi, for fun, I'm Heitner, and welcome to Finalysis. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a match that could end up becoming the new meta, Sugar Rush Treats Division Finals 1 between the Red Alliance of 16610A Snacky Cakes and their alliance partner 62880A Title versus the Blue Alliance of 2145X PSU and 16099B Overclock. This match shows an incredible new strategy designed to get around wing play and SG tech, but it also shows how that's still beatable and why I believe that this makes pushback incredible to watch. See if you can spot any creative ways to avoid getting blocked by wing play, but also how you can defend against wing play the way that Snacky Kicks does. Let's dive in and let us know your thoughts on fun analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many Vex alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash Vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options including game-themed merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch from cute thematic options to robots and fun themed apparel you can directly support fun and look good at the same time you can also become a fun member or supporter through youtube join to get early access to most of our content thank you for your continued support before we jump into this match let's first introduce the teams and some unique features about the robots which will make this match interesting first starting with the blue lines we have 2145x psu on the bottom right here and the alliance captain overclock b on the top right over here then on the red alliance, we have 62880A, Tidal, on the top left here. And as I mentioned, one of the things you're going to want to note about this robot is that it can actually go under the bar for defensive maneuvers, which will be really interesting towards Snacky Cake's strategy here. And then obviously, we have the number one seed, Snacky Cakes, and their incredibly innovative sunroof or blocker here. See, what this allows them to do, and you'll see this later in the match, but it allows them to put uh, the blocker over this goal here and kind of protect the balls that are there. Since they're not actually reaching into the goal here, they're not in SG-10 violation, as I mentioned in the intro, which allows them to sit there and prevent the other team from winging their balls out. It's an incredibly innovative strategy, and we'll see how it can win, but also in this match, how it eventually ends up losing. Let's jump straight into Autumn. So over here, one of the things we see is that Snacky Cakes goes and they collect the four balls, or the three ball stack here. They have one ball in their intake, and then they go straight for the match loader to unload all their balls, uh, ending up with uh, around eight balls in that long goal there. What PSU is doing here is that they're doing the same exact strategy, but because Snacky Cakes has one more ball, because their Auton is that consistent, they're ending up just sitting here uh, with that long goal uh, control bonus, even though uh, PSU tries to push them with their wing. Then on the other side, we see Title getting two balls into this uh, long goal, uh, which secures the uh, autonomous bonus for the Red Alliance, and we see Overclock going for a kind of push, uh, push the balls type Auton. However, they end up missing, which doesn't actually end up affecting the match at all. But overall, this is a Red Alliance win, and one of the things that you're going to want to watch out for is that immediately Snacky Cakes, because they have this blocker, they don't need to go for that initial wing play, right? Um, as this match progresses and we start counting up Auton, again, obviously Red ends up, up getting this, you're going to see uh, this blue alliance is strategizing for PSU to immediately go and try and push all these balls out. They're going to try and just leave three in the control bonus, right? So that way the other team can't use their balls to descore them. And that's what they try and do. However, Snacky Cakes is just going to sit here. They have this nice hood, which wedges within the goal. Again, not illegal, not an SG10 violation. And they're just going to sit here and camp until the um, blue alliance eventually goes away, right? There's a little bit of pushback when blue tries to push the balls, uh, red can just push back. And eventually blue is going to say, hey, we keep trying to push this. We're not going to get this. And Snacky Cakes get into, gets into prime position, right? They're sitting right here with their sunroof, which allows them to have uh, seven balls in the long goal. They have their sunroof here and they have a little stick here, which prevents the other team from uh, pushing the balls out. Since they're not reaching closed, again, not an SG10 violation, and they can just sit there for the rest of the match right? They have this bottom long goal control bonus. They have Auton. And right now they have this top control bonus, but they don't actually need that. See what they only need to win the match mathematically is because of the seven ball scored here, the control bonus that they're going to guarantee here, because there's no way that the other team can get this control bonus unless they somehow get snacky off of here, right? They have that, they have uh, Auton. So all they need is one more control bonus, whether that's the top control bonus, whether that's the bottom control bonus or whether that's this long goal, right? 
the only way that the other team can mathematically beat them, uh, assuming that the standard wing play ensues that many matches have, is by double parking. At which point, if the other team goes to double park, then Saki Case can kind of just say, oh, well, we're just going to descore what you have, and they win. So it's almost a guaranteed win here if they play the strategy right. But what we're going to see is something really interesting here. So as this match plays out, um, again, a little bit more descoring here by 2145X, um, and eventually they're kind of starting to give up, right? They say, okay, we're going to just play other ways. Um, and what Snacky Cake's big mistake here was they leave, right? They, instead of just sitting here and knowing that they have the control, they say, well, we don't want any blue blue balls in our goal. They get a little bit greedy and they end up trying to descore these balls with their wing, right? Because of that, they're out of position for their um, sunroof. They get stuck here a little bit. And eventually, we're going to see that there's three blue balls in this control zone right here, right? And now, all of a sudden, there's only one more red ball in this goal. So Snacky Kicks here is screwed, according to their strategy, right? They still have the autonomous bonus, but they've lost this long goal, right? They've lost this top control zone. They still have this bottom and this top, so they're still mathematically ahead, but they can't just sit there with a bunch of balls because they don't have a bunch of balls. They need to start playing a different way. And so... As they try and load up and play wing play, 2145X is just waiting here. They're waiting here like a normal match. They play back and forth, a little serve return action, as uh, Oscar the MC likes to say. And eventually, no more balls in that goal for red, right? So I think this plays to the idea of patience that we have to see in pushback, right? Because um, as we continue to watch this match, we're going to see that Snacky Cakes ends up uh, trying to get a bunch of balls, trying to go back to their original strategy. You see they get... Uh, five or six over here. They continue to try and uh, score in the long goal, but now the other team has an opportunity to defend them. But if we jump back to Auton over here, um, or right after Auton, right, you know, there's still a bunch of balls in this goal, but that's because Snacky Cakes wasn't able to get defended during Auton, right? So if we go back to, to this point right here, like I mentioned, if Snacky Cakes had just sat here this entire match, right, they would have won. Because, um, no matter how many balls the other alliance scores, they, they really can't beat them because there's just going to be, like, Snacky can just say, okay, we're going to sit here till the very last second, and then we're going to hit a last second D score or score. And what they were doing earlier in the tournament, which was really interesting, was that they had their alliance partner title here um, be able to come kind of feed them balls, right? So they would collect balls from the field, they would try and play the middles, and then they'd feed Snacky Cakes balls. So then Snacky Cakes, in the very last second, would just come over here, They'd come to this middle goal, they score a bunch of balls, and they win the match. But because Snacky Cakes ends up deviating from the strategy, they end up losing, right? Um, and and I think that the general conclusion here is that we can take away is that if they had stayed, they would have won the match. They end up not winning the match, as we end up seeing here. Um, this last second score by uh, 2 and 4, 5, X ends up being really good. They get that control zone, and they're celebrating they won that match. Uh, Blues up 1-0 in division finals. Um but if we go back to Auton over here, right, if we go back to the beginning of Auton, one of the interesting things is that um, Snacky Cakes and um, 2145X end up getting to this goal at the same time, right? They start scoring into the goal at the same time, um, as you can see that they arrive here roughly at the same time. What this means is that even if 2145X wings it, because Snacky Cakes is sitting here, um, they can't. Uh, they, two and four backs can't mathematically push the balls in control zone. They can't win. Not possible. So one of the interesting things that we really could have seen was that rather than going for these center balls and then going to the latch loader um, and then going to the goal as like a seven ball uh, out on with the wing, what they could have done that really would have guaranteed them out on much more so is they could have just gone straight to the latch loader, got into, oops, straight to the match loader, got into the goal first, and then won, winged and just sat there. Because in Auton, you can sit with your wing there. That's only four balls, but because of that, Snacky Cakes doesn't have this control bonus. They can't just sit with their sunroof open. And that would have been a great strategy to see to how to possibly beat the sunroof. Um, but one of the other nice things about this match in particular and how Snacky Cakes was playing in general was, as I mentioned, you know, their partner title here has a bot that can go under the goal. Um... We don't actually end up seeing it very much here, but because because Snacky Cakes end up losing this goal, but in other matches, especially the earlier um, 
eliminations in the division, semifinals, quarterfinals, and round of 16, what they had was that because they knew they only needed this middle control zone or one of them, they would have their part or just defend this long goal. They'd have their partner actually put their bot on the uh, bottom state the entire time and just practice going around and scoring in the middle goal. Or not practice, but, but they'd go around and score in the middle goal and they'd play a lot of heavy defense because you're mathematically up here and Saki Case can just hit. And this is where you're turning this back and forth offensive game into a very controlled game, which is how you end up winning matches just in Vex in general, right? It's being able to control that all-time bonus and being able to control the match as much as possible. Which is why this sunroof from Snacky Cakes is probably the most interesting thing that we've ended up seeing here this year, is they found a way to go back to their original Mall of America strategy, where they would just put a wing in and sit there, and they've been able to find a way to continue to sit there and continue to not rely on driver skill, which is what a lot of this game has ended up being. Now, the biggest mistake that I think Snacky Cakes ends up making uh, beyond this match um, is that they end up just deciding to not use this sunroof anymore because of what happened in this match. Um, they were able to win their division finals just because they were the they were the better team here um, overall after after three finals, which which happens. But then in overall finals, they ended up losing uh, finals one and then ultimately finals three because of the fact that they ended up abandoning their sunroof and they played a different strategy. So I would have loved to see them play with this sunroof in grand finals and also just would have loved to see what would have happened in this match had they not uh, left that goal. So... I think the last thing that I would find really interesting with this sunroof strategy and that I look forward to is what would have happened had, um, you know, overclock B first of all, hit their autumn, right? So been able to uh, win this long goal in the first place, but then also what would have happened if they would have sort of double teamed snacky case here, right? So instead of it just being two and four five X trying to push them off, they could have come, you know, overclock could have come around and either given two and four five X an extra push, you know, so you have a little bit more power, or they could have tried to push them from this side, or especially with an under the bar, bar bot, you can push them from this side where uh, you have a little bit more uh, power towards them and you, you can kind of double team them, uh, trying to angle them a different way. Overall, incredibly interesting match that we see here. Um, really great to see this new strategy from Snacky Cakes and how to prevent wing play um, and how to control the match as much as possible because ultimately that's how you end up winning matches. I love seeing innovation and evolution of the meta, especially in games like Pushback, where we've seen the same play and same robots for a while. Do you think that blockers are going to end up being on every robot in a little bit? Or what do you think it's going to progress to by worlds? I don't know. Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Fun to be able to keep up to date on all our content. I'm Heitner, and thank you for watching Funalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future Fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu vex.